thank you thank you dr gautam thank you dr vinay agarwal for this invite to present on myths and facts of obesity surgery i bring greetings from sar gangaram hospital and bhatia global hospital and endo surgery institute edward demings had beautifully said without data you are just another person with an opinion and all of us know the global burden of obesity we know that 650 million people are globally they are obese and the cause of death is definitely high up for obesity and india is ranking among the third largest country for the obesity with 11% among adolescents and 20% among adults so our thinking is definitely it needs lot of awareness especially on the part of the physicians and we know it when the bmi body mass index is more than or equal to 25 then lifestyle modifications but if it increases then there is a role of pharmacotherapy and if the body mass index is more than 35 definitely one has to go in for surgery today i am not going to speak about the technical aspects of the bariatric surgery or the obesity surgery but our thoughts are that ultimately one should be cautious that the if the bmi is increasing then the chances of the relative risk of death definitely increase both in males as well as in females so one should be very very clear that we do not have any thoughts or back thoughts in our minds now the topic is the myths most of times especially in physician conferences we have found out in interactive sessions that they think that all the bariatric surgeries are more or less same no we know it that sleeve gastrectomy was the procedure which was started way back in 1998 2000 but it has taken over the world all over and it is the maximum number of surgeries which are being done are of sleeve gastrectomy throughout the world rest for example gastric bypass the band bpds and there are so many other procedures but most common procedure which is being done throughout the world is the sleeve gastrectomy and in this in, in a wide spectrum i would say that if you are touching the stomach only that means if you are manipulating only the gastric aspect then it is either the banding or the sleeve gastrectomy but if you are touching both the stomach as well as intestines that means the combination is being done and that is the gastric bypass ru and y gastric bypass and all of us know that once we do the bariatric surgery lot of advantage of weight loss is definitely there but more important is the resolution of the comorbidities comorbidities of the order of for example diabetes hypertension migraine obstructive sleep apnea syndrome and so on and so forth and ultimately the quality of life definitely improves after bariatric surgery and the trend has been the sleeve is going up and up most of the centers which we used to visit in us they were doing 80% of the gastric bypasses maybe 10 years 7 years back but now they are doing 90% of the sleeve gastrectomy so this is the advantage of a simple procedure and there are procedures for example laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy or robotic sleeve gastrectomy i will just clear one of the myths later on about the robotic surgery also and then ru and y gastric bypass mini gastric bypass and if the sleeve gastrectomy has be to be converted then it can be converted into a single anastomosis duodeno ileostomy i am not going to go into the technical details but you can see from this small photograph that the in gastric bypass the food goes into a very small pouch and then whole of the stomach is excluded out and the food ultimately goes out so our answer is 
that we have to be sure that we do not have unnecessary malabsorptive. Restrictive phenomena was there in, in both the procedures, but malabsorption is also added on in, in the gastric bypass. And there will be some situations in which, for example, the patient has had sleeve gastrectomy 7 years, 10 years, 15 years back and now the patient has gained weight, then, then also we have the proposition that it can be converted into SARDS, that is single anastomosis duodenal aleostomy. So many times, many patients ask us that whether we should go in for sleeve or gastric bypass, our thoughts are that yes, if the sleeve gastrectomy has been accepted world over as the commonest procedure, one. And if you are able to maintain your resolution of the diabetes, hypertension, sleep apnea and so on and so forth, for long time, nothing like sleep. But if, for example, maybe after a few years, one starts developing weight regain or there is a coming back of the diabetes also, then also we can offer the redo surgery and that is a conversion of a sleeve gastrectomy into a sardine. And our thinking is basically one should always feel that there was a time when people used to think that by just by diet, by exercise, they will be able to control the weight but or, or the resolution of the comorbidities will be there but no. Ultimately, it is a question of going under the knife and one has seen in the long term also, 2 years, 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, that resolution of the diabetes is definitely occurring. And many times, many physicians ask us that is bariatric surgery risky? Patients definitely ask, but our thoughts are that now because of the gamut of investigations which we always go in before going in for surgery, we evaluate throughout the pulmonary function test, obstructive sleep, sleep study and so on and so forth. So the risk of bariatric surgery has come down even less than the risk of laparoscopic cholecystectomy. All of us know that laparoscopic cholecystectomy, when we started our career in 92, then it, it used to have that kind of resistance that why go in for laparoscopy, why not go in for open, but it has proven beyond, been proven beyond doubt. Now again, the bariatric surgery is definitely a safer proposition uh, even if it is being compared to laparoscopic cholecystectomy. So thinking is definitely if you go into the details and I am just quoting the data, not, not exactly I am saying what I am saying, is that if you see that the complication rate of intraoperative complication rate is of the order of 0.69 to 5 percent, early postoperative complication 0.2 to 10 percent. So our thinking is that ultimately one, the surgeon has to be chosen. The center has to be chosen. The, those centers who are doing high volume surgeries, definitely the complication rates are less as compared to those surgeons who are doing for the first or second time. So one has to be very, very cautious in choosing the surgeon and choosing the surgery and the center. Third thing is that many times, many patients start asking that maybe after few years we will start gaining weight. Yes, one can gain weight if we do not stick to the protocol. What I mean to say, there are patients who will carry on taking carbs, they will carry on taking alcohol and they say that you allowed us to do take the liquid diet, so I am still on liquid diet, I am carrying on with the liquid diet and I am on alcohol and that is the reason of their weight regain. So our thinking is that we have to push, we have to educate our patients that ultimately 70% of the patients will maintain their weight loss. But if they are following the protocol, if they are taking lot of protein, they are taking less of carbs, no fats, they are exercising it well, they are the, those centers who are having a good follow-up of calling their patients, following their patients up, world over it has been seen, they have the best possible results. So our thinking is that ultimately, it is not that any and every patient will have weight regain. So one has to be very, very careful about again choosing and then following those patients. There are patients who will never quit smoking, for example. 
If in US, if you tell them that you are smoker, you are alcoholic, they will not even do the bariatric surgery because of the smoking, the chances of leak the chances of bad anosmosis are definitely higher. So one should be cautious about that. Yes, what are the situations in which laparoscopic surgery scores over robotic surgery or vice versa? Our thoughts are these kind of patients. If the patient is having a BMI of 84, we call them as super, super obese, super morbid obese patients. If these kind of patients, more than 50 BMI, we definitely are not comfortable when we use the rigid laparoscopic instruments. But if we are using the robotic arms like this, they have the flexibility and they lift the abdominal wall up and then it appears that we are operating an area, for example, which is having a BMI of 34 rather than 84. So thinking is that those patients who are super, super morbid obese patients, they are offered the robotic surgery. In Sir Gangaram Hospital, we had the privilege of now having two robots. And in 2012, we started doing the robotic bariatric surgery in super, super morbid obese patients with 350 kg, 320 kg patients. And then the patients have done well because of the comfort level of the surgeon who is operating. Now, for example, this kind of patient, once the surgery has been done, he is around 290 kg and after the surgery he is being shifted and he can shift himself to the trolley so what i mean to say the now with the help of with the progress of the technology we did robotic surgery with the advantage of the anesthesia excellent anesthesia teams all over so the patients are able to move themselves from the operation table to the OT trolley and then ultimately next very day the, you can see you can visualize next very day the patient is moving with 290 kg so our thinking is choose your patients well and and the physician should definitely make sure choose your surgeons well choose your centers well and choose your surgery well so that ultimately we are able to give the best possible benefit to the patient. Myth number five is that most patients need supplements. Yes, all of us know that when we do the sleeve gastectomy, when we take the part of the stomach out, these, the content, the for example, vitamin B12, iron, calcium, we are being absorbed there. So if we have taken out that part of the stomach, definitely the patients can have deficiencies. So what we do is, and what we follow religiously is, that we get the investigations done one month, three months, six months, nine months, and so on and so forth. If there is any deficiency, then definitely we supplement it. And but again and again, we always tell our patients and train our patients well, that most important is protein intake. So if you carry on doing the exercise, 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 protein, 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 you will be able to maintain your weight. And the, the protein requirement in such kind of patients is, 2 grams per kg body weight rather than 1 gram per kg body weight and it has to be divided into doses and then ultimately we, if we push this protocol, the patients are able to maintain their weight. So in conclusion, before the time finishes, before the bell rings, I will say that take care of your body. It is the only place you have to live in. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for your patient hearing. Any questions please? Dr. Chajumal Goel. Dr. C. M. Goel was my teacher in Moranazad Medical College a long time back. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. Luchan. Wonderful. Uh, honestly, purposefully, I have excluded the ballooning because we don't, we don't believe in that. Our thinking is that if, for example, patient goes in for ballooning and the patient is going to have a loss of, of the order of 10 to 20 percent only. And once you take out the balloon after six months, 
the patient's weight starts going up and the comorbidities again come back. So many times, in, way back when we started our bariatric carrier way in 2000, then we placed some balloons, but ultimately we repented because patients had lot of challenges and patients used to pay, but ultimately have the similar kind of weight. So our thinking is, Rather than going in for balloon, we should go in for sleeve gastrectomy because it can be done in high risk cases also and the results are of the order of 70% excess weight loss rather than only 15 to 20%. Sir, I want to ask a question. Sure. Sir, sir, congratulations for this wonderful presentation. Actually, I was a resident in JSC in Nagarama. Thank you, thank you. No, I, honestly speaking, I would not differentiate and I would not be judgmental that this patient will continue taking alcohol and that is why I should give them the gastric bypass rather than sleep gastrectomy. For both the procedures, if, if the patient is going in for surgery, both the procedures, the results will be more or less similar after 5 years, after 10 years, after 20 years. But if the patient continues to take carbs in the form of alcohol, nira sugar, then definitely weight regain will be there both in sleeve as well in a bypass. So I would not differentiate. My differentiating point from sleeve into bypass or different is that if the patient is diabetic, if the patient is not controlled on insulin, if the patient is having uncontrolled diabetes with lot of insulin injections also, that patient definitely will be benefited more with gastric bypass. If the patient on endoscopy has a hiatus hernia, reflux esophagitis, that patient will definitely be benefited with gastric bypass rather than sleep. So our thinking is just because of alcohol intake post-operatively, no, that is not the deciding factor. Which is more easier to remove, sleep or gastric bypass? Excellent question. I, I mentioned in the talk also that sleeve gastrectomy can still be the first step in, in highly, maybe 80 BMI, 75 BMI, and if the need is, after five years, we can convert them into single anastomosis duodenoileostomy. We just have to fire one stapler at the duodenum, sleeve has already been created, and do the ileo duodenal anastomosis, and that's it. So sleeve can still be converted, bypass on, has no further answers. Only, only thing is that, for example, if somebody has been gone in for bypass, if the patient has weight regain, we can distalize the anastomosis. But ultimately, believe me, once failure is again a failure. So we should not have failure after failure for bariatric surgery also. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you so much. Thank you.